What's up guys, this is Jeremy from Achievement Hunter back for some more collectibles in Quantum Break. This is Act 2, and as I said before, spoiler warning, uh, I wouldn't go too far ahead in this video if you haven't played this part in the game yet. Just kind of follow along, don't want to spoil anything big for you. Alright, so the first collectible in Act 2 is a Chronon Source. This is the first one you're going to encounter in the game. So once you grab it, it's going to freeze your game and make you open up your menu so that you can apply it to a uh, ability. So you can upgrade it. That's what these do. And as soon as you do that, just pick whichever one. I did the time dodge. You will unlock an achievement because, hey, you upgraded for the first time. Chronon Surge. Upgraded to time power. So congratulations to you. If you're following along, you just got that one. The next one is after you drop this metal beam thing down on top of all these boxes, you're going to run over that and you'll see it in the back of the room right there. Now, uh, the way Chronon sources work is you can see them on a little radar that pops up when you use your time vision. They're not glowing right away. It's only when you see them with your time vision that they start glowing. Now, the first narrative object is in the next room you enter. It is going to be this witness kill list if you chose the hardline path. If you chose the PR path, it's going to be a whole thing about their PR campaign instead. So that will change. And then the next narrative object is also a quantum ripple. It is this laptop right here. Open that up. You'll get your narrative object and the ripple will unlock and that will change a little something something in the episode for you. The third narrative object is also in this room. It is right back here and a map of ground zero. So click on that. It shows where ground zero is and hey, that'll come up a little bit later. Now in the next room, you're going to have to fight a couple of enemies. So take all of them out. You'll talk to Beth Wilder for a little bit and then get on this elevator right here. Now this will start lifting you up da -da 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 -da, and it will lead you to your next Conan source. So as soon as you exit the elevator, you're going to take a right, run all the way down here and it will be right up next to this beam waiting for you walk up hold down y he'll do this cool little grab thing the kalima hey chronon source got it okay moving on to the next thing which is narrative object number four when you are in this room you'll either encounter the taxi cab guy or the protester girl from the beginning depending on if you chose hardline or if you chose pr i chose hardline so i had the taxi guy so you can open that Right there, that was an narrative object, and this eyedrop bottle over here is your first intel object, which means you will unlock the achievement, A Link to the Future, which is for finding a quantum ripple and one intel item. Again, if you're following along, this is the first place you are going to get it. So congratulations to you for that. Now we're going into the train yard right here. After you go through this gate, you have to time stop it and run through. This yard uh, has a lot of Chronon sources hidden in it. And this is the first time in the game that something weird happens. And that is, if you open up your menu, you can look at your collectibles for the level. And it kind of gives you an idea of where you are missing collectibles. Like, if you have the fourth collectible and the sixth collectible, you know you're missing one in between it. This one's kind of iffy. So you grab that Chronon Source right there, which is to the left after you walk through the gate. There are two Chronon Sources to the right. And... The order you can easily grab them is not how the timeline says to get them. I don't, but you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to get the fifth Chronon source that is labeled in the collectible timeline, which is going up that billboard and onto this building, dropping down inside and grabbing this Chronon source right here. Now, we actually already ran past the sixth Chronon source, what do we get but... Here? Uh, you know, the game says, insists that you get this one first. It doesn't insist. You can get them out of order, but I just did this so you can follow along with the timeline. Chronon Source 6, you're going to jump your way back out and go back onto that billboard that you jumped onto from the train. So all these boxes do a cool little jump there because why not? All right, Iceman, come on, let's go. He's going to run his way over here. There's actually a cool little thing I thought that was pretty funny is when the taxi guy sees you i don't know his name i just call him taxi guy when he sees you use your powers for the first time he goes whoa you're like some kind of x-man or something which is uh i think pretty funny considering you know this actor played Iceman in the x-men movies it was you know i thought maybe a cool little shout out don't know if it needs a whole easter egg video or something but i mentioned it here so the next narrative object is when you drop down this hole you're gonna open the door to let taxi guy in or protester girl whichever one 
First, open up this laptop and read the email. That is narrative object number five. And number six is on the other side of the room. It is this radio right here. Walk over, click on it, boop, 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 boop. Someone will start talking and you have your next narrative object. We are almost at the end of part one of act two. So Crawdon Source number seven was kind of tricky. I missed it on my uh, first playthrough. I had to run all the way back. You're gonna hop up on this dumpster as you get into the alleyway. There it is up there, you can see it. Then up onto this awning over the door. Walk up, hold out your hand. Beep, bink, grab that one. That is your last Cronon Source for this level. The Cronon Source is kind of cool because each of your power has three upgrades. The first one costs one Cronon Source, the second upgrade costs uh, four, and the third upgrade costs six. So you need a lot of these Cronon Sources to get yourself all the way upgraded. So, at the end of this level, you rewind the time right here, and you have to go through onto the computer in the back to unlock the door, but first grab both of the narrative objects in here, and that will close out Act 2, Part 1. Oh, God. Act 2 has a lot of collectibles in it. So let's move right along to Act 2, Part 2. Starting with the first narrative object is this television right when you start the level. Walk over. You will hear some talk from whatever that doctor's name is. I already forget. But she's just kind of talking about whatever. And then after that, you're going to walk down past the core right here. Just scoot on by. That's me looking at a Cronon tank. And there is a laptop in the back of the room right here. So type away on that. Uh, Professor Amaral. That's it. Dr. Amaral. That's her name. Now, these metal rafters that you ride up, you're going to ride this up here and jump across. You will have to do this to progress with the level. But instead of heading right, you're going to go down these stairs and look under the stairs where they hide everything in every video game to find a Cronon source. So there's your first one. Dink. One of seven. That's right. There are seven. The Act 2 levels are very long. So now go back up the stairs, jump up these boxes. Again, you will have to go this way to progress through the level. You're supposed to run here and then I think hook a right. Instead, go left and drop down into this room and there is your second Cronon source. Snag that one. It's pretty cool. I mean, the upgrades are pretty good. There's certain ones that I don't think are too necessary, like the time vision one, especially if you have this guide. I would definitely do that one last. But let's grab a third Cronon source so you can get those upgrades. It is on top of what I believe is a time dampener that is turned off at this time. You don't run into these until I think late in Act 3. But they stop all your powers and they're fucking annoying. Now the next narrative object is kind of weird. It's this, you go inside this car right here and uh, hit a button. It opens up this trailer. You have to do this to go through the level. So I don't, I don't know why that's a narrative object. The game does that a couple of times. Now the fourth narrative object is on the hood of that car. So go up and just click on that. It is a trailer note. Okay. See, so it says like hooked it up to the car. You can use that to open the trailer. So that's how you learn to do that. Now the next narrative object is inside of the trailer. There are two in here. This is probably one of the funniest ones in the entire game. Uh, you open this up. It's a screenplay from this guy Bruce okay. Livingston so about a. Uh, it's a play called Time Knife, I think. It's a guy who can stab people and send them back in time. But the way he writes it, it's really fucking funny. He's like, he stabs him, but just gently enough to send him back in time and not actually hurt him. Like a whole bunch of weird descriptors like that. So after you grab, make sure you read that one. And after you grab it, go grab the sixth one, which is also in the trailer. And right after you exit the trailer, run into this boathouse here and grab the Cronon source hidden in the back behind this tank. So grab that. There's your fourth one. And now we are heading on to the next narrative object, which is as you're going through this quarantine area, it's just kind of this giant sign as you're entering ground zero. And that's what the sign says. It says, caution, you're entering ground zero. Absolutely no entry beyond this point. So once you look at that sign, it's like, oh, that added a lot to the story. Seventh narrative object. The next thing is the quantum ripple. As you're going through the workshop and time is kind of losing its shit, you're going to go over here and look at this Texas River uh, River Port, I guess that sign right there it will disappear and you will see that pop up later in the episodes so there is quantum ripple for that level now narrative object number eight is as you're progressing through instead of going through that door right there just kind of pop over to the right and open up this laptop it's another email from Charlie Wincott who's kind of a big character in this game now the next ones are all in the same room here the first one is going to be an Intel object on your right 
And that's me just kind of looking around. You have to kill two people in here. Open up this intel object. It's, uh, the intel objects are usually pretty short. So, I mean, you can read that one real quick. Come over here and open up narrative object number nine. I kind of recommend reading all of these. I mean, if you're really going to get invested in the story, it's pretty cool to read all of this stuff happening behind the scenes. It, it does add a lot, and it's kind of fun. These are fun collectibles. They don't seem pointless. So there's narrative object number 10 right there. So that's from Fiona, another pretty big character in this. And after you exit that place, before heading into the quarantine tunnel, you're going to hook a right and run all the way to the back of the room. You'll see a elephant graffiti on the wall. And the Chrononsaurus is just chilling out on its trunk right there. So, yeah, like I said, you have to use your time vision to get the Chronon sources to show up originally. Otherwise, they're completely invisible. So you got to watch out for that radar. Your controller will rumble a little bit when you're near one. Narrative object number 11 is as you're going through the quarantine tunnels, you just go over to this laptop, see something about Liam Burke and all of that, so you can read that and stay stay in the know about that. Chronon source number 6 is as you're exiting the tunnel, it will be on your left as you're walking out. You're supposed to go right down that way, but instead turn left and grab this Chronon source. I think that that is a piece of the core right there with the Chronon source hanging off of it, but, you know, who fucking knows at this point. Narrative object number 12 is in the van as you're continuing forward. You can see it in the back right here. Open that one up. Here we go. More stuff about Liam Burke, his psych evaluation, all this kind of stuff. Narrative object number 13. We're getting really close to the end of Act 2, Part 2. It is on the bench. I believe this is the last narrative object for Part 2. There we go. From Charlie Wincott. Blah, 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 blah. And then onto the last collectible in general for Act 2 Part 2 is the Chronon Source, which is right after that one, just behind these lockers. Pick that one up. It'll be your seventh Chronon Source for this here? level. Closing that one out. Oh, boy. All right. Moving right along to Act 2 Part 3. We're going to grab our first Chronon Source, which is up on the rooftop. Reindeer, pause. Run this way. It is going to be next to this graffiti that says A-W-E all the way on the end of the rooftop so come down here and hold your little y button there or triangle oh not triangle if you're i was gonna say triangle if you're a playstation person but i'm pretty sure this is xbox exclusive then run your way back you're gonna grab chronon source number two hop up here you can go up the scaffolding to get inside the building but instead of doing that run down to the end of the building jump onto this scaffolding then across make this big jump whoop and you're gonna climb your way inside now you get to watch me be an idiot for a little while because I knew the source was in here, but I just could not for the life of me find it. So I'm using my time vision. The radar is like, yeah, it's right next to you. It was actually covering my screen there for a second. I'm still like, but I mean, over here? Is it? No, it's not in there. No, I'll use my time vision again. Ah, there it is, right on the bookshelf. So come over here, snag that one, and there's your second Conan source. Now, the next few collectibles are going to be right next to each other, which I love when they do that. You come over to here into Will's little workshop area where he was experimenting with rats and stuff like that. So you can see me looking at a bin there where we had some of his scientific rats. They about racks. Scientific rats. I accidentally clicked on that, actually, because that is not a collectible. This is the collectible, the recorder right next to it. And also this binder right next to it. So there's your second narrative object. And then if you move over just a little further, there's some papers that are going to be your third narrative object. They are just really keeping these all nice and close together, and hey, I enjoy that. The fourth narrative object is also right here. It's not this. Wait for it. It is a radio down at the end of the bar. So I'm going to run my way down, and here's the radio. Come over here, listen to what this guy has to say, and you are at 4 of 11. You're getting pretty close to the end of Act 2. Moving on to Chronon Source number 3. So you can't go through those doors that were in front of me because they are locked. You have to go through here and wrap your way all around to get this Chronon Source hidden back behind the bar. And boop, there you go. Number 3 right. of 5. Closing it out. Now we're heading down into the uh, locker rooms down here. There's Beth Wilder. Hey, Beth, what's up? I'm getting collectibles. Run down to the end of here. You're going to go into an employees-only office. It's like a janitor's closet or something. You'll see the sign right up there. Just follow the wires. And there is the Chronon Source up on the ladder. So snag that guy. Getting pretty close. Now I think we're heading into the actual time machine room. Yep, here we are. So we're actually in the pool. 
there is a bunch in here. So first, run to your left and grab the two that are over here. There is some schematics on the wall. That is the Time Machine Room map. So you can check that out, try and decipher it. Will's got some weird writing, blah, 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 blah. Look over here, and here is your next we'll one right here. Some, uh, whatever that says. Physicist on the Rise article, blah, blah, blah. And that is your next narrative object. Don't worry that it says I have nine at the top, but that is number six. I got these out of order and then placed them in the video in the correct order. Uh, so this is how the game wants you to get them. For your next ones, you're going to head to the right when you first enter the room. And there's a bunch over here. First, there's this binder, which is from William Joyce to Beth Wilder. So you can read that, blah, blah, blah. Come over here to see the countermeasure, some draw-ups of that. Here's the schematics for the countermeasure, which you haven't even really seen yet. Then go over here to see even more schematics. Here's just a shit ton of schematics for everything that Will was working on, all the crazy shit. He's got the core. He's got some stuff about the corridor. And, uh, yeah, some fun stuff. Once you're done reading all of that, run behind the corridor, which is this thing next to me. I'm just going to run all the way behind it to grab another narrative object just hanging out on the table. And that is going to be numero 10. And that is about uh, Jack and Will's parents. So you can get a little backstory right there. Then we're moving over to grab the last Chronon source, which is hidden right back here next to the narrative object. Just kind of uh, on this beam over here. So we got that. That's all the Chronon sources for Act 2. We are going to grab the last collectible for Act 2 Part 3, which is way in the back behind the time machine. I'm going to speed up the run a little bit because you just have a like kind of a little trot when you're in one of these more cinematic areas of the game. Come over here, get a civilian's guide to time travel. That's going to be narrative object number 11, which is going to close out Act 2 Part 3. That is everything in there. And the last thing is the narrative object in the Act 2 Junction, which is right when you start. Instead of following Martin Hatch, you're going to turn around, go back to your desk, open up this email from Sophia Amaral, and that is it for Act 2. That is all the collectibles. So that is by far the longest video. The other ones will be shorter, I promise, but you're almost there.